everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me. Now today in our Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination series, we're going to be looking at salvaged patina. So we are working through all of the colours alphabetically. Obviously we're up to the S's, so we are a good two thirds through now. I can't wait to get this completed, so I've got an entire library for you to reference. So what we're going to be doing is first of all swatching this onto white cardstock to see what it really looks like when it's blended. We're going to compare it to other blue greens in the range. We're also going to do two colour combinations with it, one with an additional two colours and one with an additional three colours. So let's get started. Everything that I'm using is available at Craft Stash and it's all linked down below. This includes my inks, my brushes, my blending mat, um, the distress charts that I'm going to be showing you, these are actually hosted on my blog and these are free for you to download and fill in or not fill in if, either way, depending on which one you uh, decide to print off. Um, they're completely free, like I say, I don't even ask you for an email address or anything to download those. So uh, yeah, go and enjoy those, make the most of them, pop them up on the wall in your craft room. So, salvage patina, a beautiful minty green teal colour. It's so fresh. It is stunning for uh, winter themes. It's perfect for summer themes if you think about the sea, the beach, the pools as well. It really is a great all rounder. So, you can see just blended into the cardstock there the colour it is. Let's take a look at it compared to the label. And I always think it's a little more blue than the label shows. Um, very close to the actual ink pad but on the label even if we go to the area in the bottom corner or the top corner here where it's solid colour um, and that's sort of more like your solid colour before you apply any water or anything I still think it's ever so slightly more blue but very very little difference if you are picking this up in a shop or even looking online you're going to get that quite true to colour now taking a look at our colour chart, as I say this one you can download from my website or my blog that is linked in the description and it comes as a black and white colour chart for you to print off and cut up and put in your home but you'll need to fill it in yourself. Okay let's take the greens out of here and let's also take, we haven't, oh we've got some there and then we've also got the teal so let's use these three. So you'll need to fill this in yourself. This does also come with a template for you to fill in the squares um, just at the right shape or size if you want to. So looking here, we can see we've got salvage patina at the top. Perfect. I think tumble glass is really quite similar, although a touch less green, um, but still that lovely bright pale blue green colour. Down the bottom here we have a speckled egg, which is ever so slightly darker, a bit more dusky, a little bit more maybe grey to it. Um, and then we've also got Mermaid Lagoon as well, which I just think is a few shades darker. Um, I think, I mean, we've got some beautiful teals here, so Evergreen, Bow and Lucky Clover, even Pine Needles. They are lovely greens, but they're not, they're all too dark, so they don't quite fit. But as you can see there, if you are looking at doing any of these colour combinations but you don't yet have this colour and you want to substitute it with something else, I do think tumbled glass or speckled egg would be a good choice. So popping these away and while I've got my colour chart out, I just want to show you the other colour chart that I was talking about. Now this one is one that I have filled in for you. So you print it off with the colours already filled in just on one A4 sheet and you've got a really nice overview here of all of the colours. So I, because I filled this in, I ink blended myself, I then scanned it at 300 dpi. Um, the better quality you can possibly print this out at, uh, the more likely you're going to get a really true colour match, but it just gives you a really nice overview of some colours that you could be looking at for your next choice. So let's move on to our first colour combination. So I'm going to be going with Uncharted Mariner, which lots of you already know is one of my favourite colours. I must admit, Salvage Patina, when it came out, was also a favourite of mine for many months. Um, it's the teals, I can't help it. <laughs> and then we've got Tea Dye, which is a beautiful neutral, but it's that warm tone, and I just think it works really well into teals as well. So let's do Uncharted Mariner first. Now I'm going to use this swatch, but bear in mind that the ink has just dried on here while I've been talking you through the colour charts. So we'll see how these blend. 
Sometimes you might need to reinvigorate a colour if you've laid it down a little bit earlier and then you're trying to blend back into it. You ideally want to do it while the dye element of the inks, the oxides, is still wet and not quite soaked in. But you know, you can rejuvenate them by just adding some more colour. So I'm going to go up to the line of the salvage patina and then I'm going to pick up some more on my brush. I'm going to go into the colour here and in circles I'm just going to work down into that uncharted mariner. Just tiny little circles working my way across, gradually working down further and further until I feel that I've blended that nicely. Look at that, isn't that just beautiful? It's just blended so well. And then I'm going to just give my mat a wipe. There we go turn that over that can be drying while I work on the dry side and then we're going to go into the tea dye like I say this is it's just like a cup of tea actually it's it's almost perfect tea color if you like it like this if you like milky tea and I'm just going to work that again up to the line where we started or stopped with the salvage patina then I'm going to pick up some more on my brush go across the solid colour and then start working down to that blend line again. I want the salvage patina to definitely be the hero of this colour combination, the one that shows the most, the one in the middle um, that stands out best. The other two are just sort of accents on the side. So just again working side to side until I'm pleased with the blend there. Isn't that beautiful? It just looks like a beach scene. It can be summery if you take away that it could be wintry as well. You know, it's just absolutely stunning. What a beautiful colour salvage patina is. Now I'm going to allow that to dry because with um, distress oxides, we always get a slightly cloudy effect, a slightly more sort of frosted effect once it's dry. So I'm going to pop that to the side. It also means that if you've had any issues with blending, sometimes they can almost disguise themselves when they're dry rather than being wet. So let's clean the mat off and let's just start with a fresh sheet of cardstock and we're going to bring in some different colours this time and that's going to be Dusty Concord, Shaded Lilac and Pine Needles. So they are going to work really beautifully. In fact, I'm going to put Salvage Patina between the Pine Needles and the Shaded Lilac. Because it's a lighter colour, I think it will work nicely into the lighter lilac there. So the first colour is going to be Pine Needles. For some reason, I've got glitter on my ink pad. I can't even remember how that happened or why that happened, but it's there. Um, at least this is only a swatch and not a project. Now, Pine Needles is a really, really strong colour. We have already worked with this as an individual um, video on YouTube. If you go to the playlist here, or I will... Uh, pop it up at the end as well so you can watch it later on um, you'll see all the colors we've got to so far and pine needles is one of them so you'll be able to see some lovely combinations with that um, to be honest as well as dusty concord we've also worked with that one too so there's our pine needles and i'll leave lots there's lots of ink on the brush so i might need that in a moment to help with my blending then I'm going to come in. Now, what I tend to do if I'm blending a panel, whether it's a small strip or whether it's a large piece, I visualize where I want those blend lines to be. So I know that I've got four colors. So in theory, I'd like four quarters, one quarter per color. So I'm visualizing that the uh, salvage patina is going to go in this area here. So I'm going to put my brush loaded with ink down directly in the middle of that area, just across there. I'm going to blend this on there so it's solid colour up to about my halfway line there and I'm going to fade that out by lightening the pressure slightly so I might go just over the line and then I'm going to do the same towards the pine needles now knowing that pine needles is a strong colour I'm going to work that way blending into it if I work this way blending into it it would override the salvage patina completely so I'm just going to start going along the line in small circles like so just start blending that there we go now I said I've still got some ink on here so I'm going to come from this end and I'm going to come back and start blending in this way now I kind of feel that that's not blending very well at the moment so I'm going to use more ink it may be that I've left it too long it may be that I've just chatted for too long so a bit more salvage patina this side 
and see how that goes. That's better. The only thing you don't want to do if you're blending up this way is suddenly go, oh, I missed a bit over here and start blending here because you will have a little bit of that pine needles on your bristles. So just be wary, just keep yourself a cloth, a towel, ideally a dry towel um, to the side so you can come back and wipe off any kind of, sort of, kind of contaminated colours if need be. And I like to finish off the end with that solid colour of pine needles there. That's better. It's a much better blend than I was getting to start with. So you see, sometimes you can just work at a blend and it will work out in the end. Oh, it rhymes as well. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Let's wipe that now. Let's go into our shaded lilac. Notice between the greens, I just wiped my mat. That's just to make sure I don't get any green contaminated in the lilac where I don't want it. So let's pick up shaded lilac. So this will be one being an S. This is one that will be coming up very soon. And look at that beautiful, beautiful colour. So again, I went in the middle. I haven't come directly up to this line. I haven't come directly up to this line. I've gone down the middle. Then I start blending out. So lighten it this side to make blending easier in a moment when we get to that side. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then the same this side just lightly so when i say lightly i'm putting less pressure on my brush always working those small circles now i'm at risk because again shaded lilac is quite a deep color quite a strong color even though it's a pale lilac um and i want salvage patina to be again the hero in this color combination so i want to blend salvage patina into the lilac again so the end colors are just accents so i'm going to come back in so you notice I put some more ink on my brush. I came back into the center of the green. I didn't go back onto the blend line with lots of ink on my brush because we need to blend it in. So I'm coming to the center where there's lots of solid ink, solid salvage patina color. And then I'm going to work my way upwards into that lilac. It doesn't matter what direction your circles are, whichever feels best for you. I tend to work anti-clockwise. I don't know why it doesn't matter there we go look at that lovely okay so I'm going to just pop a little bit more shaded lilac down so I can now go into dusty concord this one has a little more of uh, a pink hue to it it's certainly getting more towards a warmer lilac or warmer purple so just touching the end there rounding those circles towards the lilac and just keep stepping back and looking Never mind the fact that I'm touching my wet ink. Um, you can, there are lots of ways you can hold your paper still. Um, but for this, I'm just holding it with my fingers. But just keep stepping back and taking a look at your lines and how far you're blending each time. So there we go. Just went back into there and again here. Okay, look, beautiful. I think I could probably work a bit more at that blend line there, but I don't think it's too bad at all. Now, I kind of get wintry theme, wintry feel with this, which makes me want to add my water. So for anyone who's new to Distress Oxides and just sort of fallen upon or stumbled upon this video, this is something that I like to do quite often to my colour blends. I'll certainly do it whenever I work on panels, and that's to just flick a little bit of water off my hand onto the blended ink doesn't have to be dry or wet it can be either if it's just been blended on it's fine if it's dried on there it's fine the only thing is if you've previously mixed it with water and then you're flicking water on it won't have the same effect because you've already kind of given it the water to work with previously you can either leave that to air dry or you can take yourself a bit of bit of kitchen towel after a say 10 20 seconds and lift off the excess or you can use a heat gun it's entirely up to you depending on which way you decide to let it dry there will be slightly different effects but all in all you're going to get this kind of bleached look there we go so that's not fully dry but i've lifted off the excess with a piece of kitchen towel you can see the effect that i'm going for and this is a fantastic way of hiding any kind of little mishaps you may have had with your blending if you're not entirely happy with your blend lines this is a really good way of disguising it 
So there are my two colour blends. Thank you for watching me today. You'll be able to find that playlist that I said about just here. Um, so go and find all the previous colours we've worked on there. And also, please, if you're new, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel too. Thank you, everybody. Take care.